the very hungry caterpillar. to the moon. A little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and oh, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple. But he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears. But he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums. But he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle. One slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop. One piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that he felt much better.
Now, he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out and... He was a beautiful butterfly. Okay, so I want you to keep that story in mind as we look at this next one. And I want you to be thinking about what differences do we see between that first story and this next one. Now it's time for some more amazing animals. Number 49, the amazing monarch butterfly. These lovely orange, black and white creatures do absolutely incredible things. Found in North, Central and South America and a few other places in the world, the monarch butterfly starts life by being born on a milkweed leaf. They quickly fatten up to become colorful caterpillars and it's not long till they start the incredible transformation from pupa into something really rather magical. Oh. Wing Commander Schmetterling ready for takeoff. In only a matter of hours, the monarch is ready to fly. I'm free! From baby egg to butterfly in just around a month, it's one of the most startling transformations of the whole animal kingdom. The monarch butterfly can travel thousands of miles. Whee! And when the wind is right, even to Great Britain. Welcome to Great Britain. Some of the journeys are so long, only the butterfly's grandchildren get to make it home. Sometimes resting in the same tree as their grandparents before them. There's some space on this branch, Keith. Oh, great, man. Everyone is here. The monarch butterfly certainly deserves to be called an amazing animal. Okay. We can go ahead and put our cameras back on. And let's talk about those two stories. Because they were about very similar topics, but they weren't very similar. There were a lot of differences between them. What was one difference we noticed between those two stories? Haley, what's one difference you noticed? Um, one was the same. Okay. All right, so one focused more on butterfly and the other one focused more on the caterpillar. That's cool, so have you read it before? Okay. Jadeen, what did you notice that was different between the two stories? Oh, that is a fantastic, take your hand, kiss your brain, fantastic answer. So one is like a fictional story, the other one is a non-fictional story. It's more it's a real story, right? Okay. So one has like a made up story to it, right? It, there's real caterpillars in real life. They become butterflies in real life. But you're right. That one was made up, like a made up story about one caterpillar, and the other one had facts about real butterflies that we Jaylene? What's the difference that you noticed? Mm -hmm. Do me a favor again. Beautiful answer. Take your hand. Kiss your brain. I love the word that you used. One of them was illustrated. 
which means that it was drawn. Someone made the pictures. And the other one you said used real pictures. Someone didn't have to go out and draw them. They could take a camera or a video recorder and record what was happening. Man, you guys had fantastic answers for these. Very good job. Very well done. What do you think the author's purpose was for that first story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar? Was that to persuade us? Was that to inform us? Or was that to entertain us? Kylie, what do you think? Was that to persuade? To, okay, to entertain. I agree with you. I think, what, do you, what emotion do you think the author wanted you to feel, Kylie? How do you think the author wanted you to feel with the hungry caterpillar? Okay, it was funny, so probably happy, right? Who can tell me the author's purpose for that second story? Was that what, the second one, the monarch butterfly, to persuade us, to inform us, or to entertain us? Noah, what do you think? To persuade, to inform, or to entertain? The second story. To inform us. They gave us lots of facts about those monarch butterflies, about where we can find them, about the, these long journeys that they take. They gave us a lot of really good information for us to learn from. Okay. So we're going to talk about things that will help your reader or any reader, even if it's us, to understand the author's purpose and to understand what the author is trying to tell us a little bit more. So I'm going to take a look in our notebooks and I'm going to look in the reading notebook. And you don't have to open this one up. You can just watch my screen. What we're going to talk about, what we're going to talk about is some text structure. Okay. Text features. So we're going to talk about first and then we'll talk about text structures next. Sorry, so text, text, uh, text features for, oh, no, sorry, I do, I have it backwards, that's my fault, so text structure, okay, text structure we've seen in a couple of problems before, questions that we've come across, text structure is how they organize their writing, how they organize their information. So one of them says description. So one of the ways to organize the information is just to describe what is happening. So you have one topic or one thing that you're focused on, and then you're just giving details, facts, information about that one thing. Another one is sequence and order. That means that you're putting things in order of what happened first. What happens second and third and fourth and on and on, like beginning, middle, and end, okay? And each of these has some different words that the author might use that kind of gives you a clue. If they give you a description, or if that's the way they're organizing the information, they're going to use phrases or words like for example, or for instance, or they might say characteristics include this. They might say in addition to this, and then tell you more facts. If they're going in sequence, they're going in order, they're going to say things like before or in the beginning. They might say next or after or then and, or finally when they get to the end. There's compare and contrast. Compare and contrast we've talked about before. Compare and contrast is when you talk about how things are the same and how they're different. So some key words that you might see would be things like similar or like, same, or on the other hand. We have cause and effect. Cause and effect would be telling you this happens, and because of this, this other thing happens. We have key words like since or because or this leads to, or if they want to sound a little fancier, they might say as a result of or consequently. And the last one is problem and solution. 
problem and solution is when they tell you there's a problem, something's going wrong, and then they give you an option. This is how we could fix it. So some of the key words might be things like problem or issue. They might say as a result or because of, or they might say to solve or so or then to let you know what the solution is. Who can tell me for that first story, the very hungry caterpillar? What, what do you think they were doing? What, how are they organizing the information? Were they describing? Were they putting things in order, in sequence? Were they comparing things? Were they showing you a cause and effect, or was it a problem and a solution? How do you think that first story was organized? What do you think, Violet? If you had to pick one of these five, how was the first story organized? What would you say, Violet? Description, sequence, compare and contrast, cause and effect, or the problem and solution? The very hungry caterpillar. How do you think the author decided to organize that text? Everybody, it's me. I see them moving around right now, Nakai. What do you think, Violet? You need some help? Okay, which one do you think it is? How was that first story organized? Okay, Alexa. Very good. The first story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, is organized in sequence. It starts at the beginning, then it goes to the middle, then it goes to the end. If you notice at the top of this page, it says nonfiction extra. And, like we said earlier, the Very Hungry Caterpillar was a fictional piece of writing. Most fictional writing is going to be in sequence. They're going to start at the beginning, go to the middle, and go to the end. What about that second story, The Monarch Butterfly? That one was a nonfiction. So it could be, it could be any of these. Who can tell me which one do you think they used to organize the monarch butterfly story. Were they going were they just describing? Were they going in order? Were they comparing and contrasting anything? Was it a cause and effect or was it a problem and a solution? Who can tell me what you think? How did they organize that second story, monarch butterfly story? How was it organized? What do you think, Kylie? How did they organize the second story, the monarch butterfly story? Were they describing? Were they putting things in sequence? Were they comparing anything? Was it cause and effect or was it problem and solution?
Which one would you choose, Kyle? What would you say, Kylie? What's your best guess? How do you think they organized the second story? One about the monarch butterflies. Did they use description? Did they use sequence and order? Did they compare and contrast? Did they use cause and effect? Or did they use problem and solution? How did they organize their writing for the second story? Which one do you think is the best? I'm not gonna grade you on your answer, so I don't want you to I don't want you to worry too much. Just tell me what you think. Need some help, Kylie? Okay, description. I'd agree with you. Their focus, their topic was that monarch butterfly. And they just kept giving us facts about them, right? Every single fact they gave us was all about the monarch butterfly. They didn't focus on anything else. I think description is a good way to put it. A very good job. Now, this week... We're going to be talking about those text structures, but we're also going to be talking about text features. Text features are things that authors add into their writing to help us understand. And some of them, some of these text features, we could see, especially in that Monarch Butterfly story. Again, a lot of times these text features are something you really only see in nonfiction writing. So in something like our read aloud book, you're not going to see a lot of these, but in nonfiction books, you'll see them a lot more often because they help us to understand what the author is trying to show us. So let's look at some of these examples. So number one, a title. Title helps us out because it tells us or gives us a clue or a hint what that topic is going to be. 
So if I were to pick up a book, and Bailey, let's say, I picked up a book and on the cover, it says, it says dolphins. Bailey, if the cover of the book, if the title of the book was dolphins, what do you think the book's going to be about? Dolphins? Probably be about dolphins. I would be very confused and very surprised if I opened up that book that said dolphins and if it was talking about ladybugs. So a title, before you even start reading, before you even open the book sometimes, if you look at the title, you get a very good idea or a very big hint what that book is going to be about. The title page. The title page you'll usually see once you open up that front cover of the book. So right behind the front cover, you usually see a title page. Okay, title page gives you very important information about the book. It tells you the book's title again. So we can see the title is something important because they don't just tell you once. It tells you who the author is, so who wrote it. It tells you if there was an illustrator. Like Jaylene mentioned earlier, illustrator means somebody drew the pictures inside the book. And it tells you who the publisher is. The publisher is who actually paid the author and who actually printed out the copies of the book to sell. Table of contents. This is usually for longer books, but real quick, show of hands if you've ever seen this in a book, a table of contents. It looks like this on the side. Okay, see a couple of hands. So a table of contents, again, those are usually for longer books. But it tells you maybe what a different chapter is called or what different parts of the book are about. And it tells you what page you can go find those. So I'm going to zoom in here. We've got a book here. And it's about the body, the human body. So we can see that we have a chapter about bones. So if I needed to know about bones, I could look at page three. If I wanted to learn more about muscles, I could look at page 17. If I wanted to know about the skin, I could look at page 18. So depending on what I need to know or what I want to look up, I can go to different parts of the book. Hang on, guys. This next one is something that people get confused. The index. The index is a lot like the table of contents, but there's one big difference. The table of contents goes in order of what comes first in the book. So like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. The index is at the end of the book and it goes in A, B, C order. So if I look here, it's for this, it's from the same book, same one about the body. But notice that they don't start with bones and muscles in the skin. Yes, Bailey. I know, baby. Like I said, don't worry about it. Not going just yet. This goes in ABC order. So it doesn't start with bones and muscles and then skin. It starts with abdomen and ankles and armpits, arms and arteries, because they all start with the letter A. The letter A is the first letter of our alphabet. Then it goes into all the parts starting with B, and it keeps going from there. We're going to talk more about different text features and different text structures throughout the week. So we'll talk more about them tomorrow.